Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint some magical mushrooms in pastel colors. If you would like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club. Critique Club has over 75 long real-time tutorials, all for $5 a month. Plus, you can upload your artwork to share with me for feedback as a Critique Club member. I'll have a link in the video description in case you are curious about learning more about Critique Club. I started off before I even sat down to paint here the day before by coating a piece of matte board with clear gesso and that's going to give it a little bit of a grit and now I'm using a sponge to add some pan pastels just to kind of give the background a little bit of a mottled look and that's what they look like when you have them in one of the big palettes there but I just wanted to pull out some of the um oh kind of muted tones just so I can get a little bit of a smoogy out of focus background effect now you can leave as much texture in there as you want or you can go in there and smooth it out more it's completely Completely up to you and um, you can even go back in later and rework some of the background which I'll show you how to do in case you don't quite have it right or you change your mind along the way I love forgiving materials that let you just kind of um, experiment and change your mind if you need to because we all change our minds sometimes and it's nice if our materials don't work against us on this now, one thing I found that was really helpful for blending these out was this uh, Jane Davenport brush. It's actually, I think, kind of a makeup brush. It looks like a fish, but um, that works so good for just kind of pushing the pastel into the board and softening the edges a bit so that you don't have as much texture if you don't want it. The other product we're going to use on this project are the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 watercolor crayons. Now I took the plastic inserts out of my tray because I had some open stock ones and then I had some uh, half stick ones from a long time ago. They were the first ones I got and they have re-released those half stick sets under the Swiss color line. So they're kind of like a student grade watercolor crayon, but boy, they're pretty good too. There's just a limited palette. So I'll try to remember to link both of those down below so you can see, um, you know, both of those sets in case you want to try one of the less expensive ones uh, and do this project as well if you don't have any crayons. I also like the Lyra Aqua Color watercolor crayons. I found those to be as almost as good as the Caran d'Ache. They may be a bit cheaper and it, you know, it really depends on where you're buying them, I think, but I find quality wise of them both to be very equivalent. I'm using a pastel yellow just to do my basic mushroom sketch and I worked from a reference photo that was realistic mushrooms. They were just like, a, it was a big cluster of beige mushrooms. I took three of them and uh, just kind of used them for a lighting reference and a detail reference, but I decided to do my own coloring because I didn't want beige mushrooms. I wanted to have some pretty magical looking pastel mushrooms. I think this would be really fun. Um, I don't know. It'd be really cute in a nursery. You could add like magical creatures to it as well. I kind of thought about adding a snail or a butterfly or a dragonfly, but then I don't know. I guess I just decided to leave it as mushrooms, but there's just some ideas to jump off from in case you want to try this artwork yourself. I began by blocking in the colors and again I'm just using kind of um, uh, low to middle value colors just lighter more pastel sherbety colors and then for my shadows I went in with a more intense kind of um, a mauvey violet color. Now if you don't have watercolor crayons you could do this blocking in with gouache and let it dry. Uh, it's a very similar product. I'd say the watercolor crayons just have a bit of a waxiness to them that gouache doesn't but as far as working properties it's very similar to gouache. It's almost like gouache in a stick. Or if you had any of those like gel crayons or like um, gelatos or Tim Holtz distress crayons or the um, recollections watercolor creams any of those could be used they're all a little bit different but essentially they're similar enough that you could use them now for the mossy mound that these uh, mushrooms are growing out of I'm starting off with this indigo and I'm just kind of laying in these darks and then I'm adding kind of a dark olive to it so I can have a nice dark base layer that I can use a lighter color on top of so this is uh, how it looks at the end of the blocking in phase. Now we're going to go in and add some water to liquefy this. However, you don't want a lot of water. If you put a lot of water here, you're going to have like a watercolor effect. To have that gouache-like effect, you just want a barely damp brush. And as you layer up, the thing to remember with watercolor crayons, in my opinion, in the way I like to use them anyway, and everyone, you can use them however you want. They're a versatile medium. 
you do you, this is how I like to use them. I like to use them kind of like gouache or oil paint. I like to use them thick. So as you add more layers, you need to make sure your brush is even drier. So the first layer, I would wet the bristles and um, I would blot the brush or I would squeeze the extra water off the brush with my fingers. And that would give me enough to merge those colors together, liquefy them enough so I get a nice opaque um, coverage and just kind of smooth everything out. When I do another layer, I, I would actually wipe my brush pretty dry on the towel. So it was just very, barely damp and that would be enough to um, blend those colors out. So if you use too much water, what's gonna happen is you're actually gonna be washing it off of the surface because we're using a gessoed surface here. If you were using a watercolor paper and you used a lot of water, you'd get a beautiful watercolor wash. But even so, even on watercolor paper, you could end up just wiping up and, and lifting off that pigment. So I just wanna, just wanna um, let you know that because I think when people think watercolor crayons, they're thinking kind of like watercolor pencils where you wanna just dilute it all, dissolve it all and make it into a wash. You can do that. But with the way I like to use watercolor crayons is more like an oil paint or like a gouache. I want it kind of thick and opaque and um, it just works really well for that because of the waxes in them and the, um, the opacity in them. They all seem to have a little bit of a, either an opaque pigment or a white pigment added so that you get that opaque look. Now the downside to that is that when you're looking at your reds, they're gonna be kind of pink. You don't have a really rich true red in this because to get a rich true red, it really almost needs to be um, a transparent color or it needs to be like a cadmium color. So, you know, you can get a rich true opaque red, but then you're generally using like, it's usually a cadmium red or something like that. Um, generally reds, if they're rich and, and vibrant, if they're vibrant and really deep, they're going to be transparent. So that's the only caveat to this. Uh, the Neo Color 2 line is that your red is not like super, super strong and like fire engine red, but you can, you know, you could go over that with a gouache, like a cadmium red gouache is going to be opaque and it's going to be red and not pink. So that's just something, that's why I like to mix media because you can use the best properties from each different media that you have. So this is another tip I have and it is saving those shavings, saving your shavings because you can use them as a paint. And I just keep this little Ocean State Job Lot $2 folding palette near like with my crayons. And as I need to sharpen something, I just sharpen it into the wells. And you may think, Lindsay, you've got 84 colors. How is that little, like, I don't know, 20 color palette, you know, fit in the bill? Because I'm not going to sharpen every color. There's just certain colors I tend to sharpen. That tends to be um, white, black, indigo, burnt sienna, um, yellow ochre. And, you know, there's, there's certain colors that I will tend to sharpen, but it's... I don't sharpen many of the colors and that just seems to work out quite well for me. And then if you're doing a specialty painting where you happen to be using, say, you're maybe you're painting a hydrangea and you're using a ton of purple and you're sharpening that purple to do your edges and whatnot, you're going to be using up that shaving, those shavings as you're doing that painting. So I find that even when I'm doing like a specialty painting where I'm using weird colors that I don't typically use and I need to sharpen it, I end up using that up in that painting. And so the well is empty by the time I'm done and I'm able to refill it with something else in the future. Another alternative, if you want to have all those points sharp because you like to work that way, maybe you're an adult coloring enthusiast and you want to use these crayons in your adult coloring books and you want that point. Um, what I'd recommend would be going to like a Dollar Tree or Walgreens or CVS, something like that, and looking at those um, pill organizers because they'll often have like um, like seven times four, what is that, like 28? Um, well, I think that's right. 28 wells, I think little like uh, containers, and you could sharpen it into those and that would give you probably more than you're going to sharpen, but you could even get a couple of those if you wanted to. That would be a really good option because those are sealed between each other. So if you added water to them, they wouldn't leak underneath into the other compartments. Uh, you could use a fish and tackle box too, but generally those have removable dividers and things can leak in there. And you really don't need really, you just need wells that are big enough to sharpen into or sharpen onto a piece of paper and tip it, like dump it into the wells, like a funnel. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a, there's an option for you if you want to have more colors. For me, I find that folding, you know, $2 Ocean State Job Lot palette really works fine for me. You could also use half pans in a, like a traditional palette if that's more your jam. I don't know you. <laughs> I mean, other than what you leave in the comments, you know what's right for you. You pick the option that works best for you. There's nothing that's perfect for everybody. And uh, and just know that, you know, I'm not really fussy about like having everything, having all my supplies super pristine and, um, you know, all the, the tips sharp, you know, 
Like I'm not, this is not a sharp tip here. And this crayon's giving me exactly the texture that I want on top of the liquefied um, darker colors underneath. So, you know, you're different. Do what works best for you. And the thing with that I that I'd say with the watercolor crayons, if you're not happy with the way they look, you can do this in oil pastel too. By the way, now that I'm thinking about it, you could totally do this with oil pastel. But I digress. Um, the thing to remember with the watercolor crayons or oil pastels, or honestly whatever you're working with, is if you're not happy, keep layering. I think things like um, oil pastel, watercolor crayons, and colored pencil, those media, those waxy media, tend to look better with more layers. Other medias like watercolor, soft pastel, which are like the ones that feel chalky, those tend to look worse with more layers. Those are real, those mediums are really easy to overwork. But um, I think these more opaque mediums, well, soft pastels will opaque too. But I felt like these mediums really do well with more layers. Soft pastel, watercolor, those almost do better when you have more fresh, less layers, less overworking to them. So, and that, so that can really, um, that can really lend itself to your personality. If you're somebody who wants to putter around and putter and putter and putter on something and perfect it, you know, you might prefer colored pencil. If you're somebody that wants to like uh, sketch quickly and, you know, just kind of put it all out there and just and leave it be soft pastels, that might be your, your media. A watercolor can go both ways. You can be really uh, fussy and layer up. I feel like if you're going to do a lot of work on a watercolor, you're really going to layer up, maybe do like a botanical. You need to plan it. Um, like really plan it out from the get-go. This is going to be a piece that you're going to spend time on and you're going to layer up. Uh, and here you can see the pattern, the palette in action me using paint from the palette, from the shavings rather than the stick, just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. Um, but anyway, but I find like with watercolor crayons, I don't need to plan it out so much. I can start with a rough sketch and I can refine as I go. I also find that with like alcohol markers, I can do that. Um, and that just might be the way that I work with certain medias. But... Anyway, the best way to figure out how you like to work is just to work and and see what happens and see what works for you and see what doesn't. Techniques are techniques, but some are going to work better for your style than others. And the only way, honestly, to discover that is to put some time behind the brush. You know, you, you can watch all the tutorials. You can read all the books, but it doesn't really matter until you put it into practice. You are going to learn so much more by making mistakes and by trying things and experimenting than you will from reading hundreds and thousands of books. You've got to actually do it. It's like driving. You can't learn to drive by reading a book about how to drive. You can learn the rules of the road. You can learn what the signs mean. You can learn, you know, what's illegal and what's, you know, <laughs> what you should do. But until you actually sit down in a vehicle and you start driving, you have no idea. Um, you know, I, I can memorize the rules of the road, but I found driving to be a very difficult thing to learn. Um, I'm glad I learned it when I was, I mean, I think I could, t I could take four, uh, drive, drivers when I was 14 and, um, and I did. And I found that I found it very challenging. I found it very challenging once I was behind the wheel, like getting the feel of the car and how much to hit the, the gas and the brake and all of that. It's something you have to do. Painting is like that. You need to try it out. You need to do it. You need to experiment it with it. Uh, here I'm putting in some details and I'm finding that picking up from the palette is going to work really well for this. That's another reason you don't really have to keep your pen, your materials really sharp because you can use a little brush and you can pick it right up from the crayon if you want to, or scribble it out on this, on your masking tape or scribble it out on a palette and pick up that pigment and add it precisely with a little brush. And that saves on your materials because you don't have to keep sharpening and, um, you know, potentially wasting some of that material. You shouldn't waste it because it's all good stuff, you know, other than the wrapper, which peels off easily, it's all usable product. So it just kind of gives you another, um, another option. But I use so much of the white that I find sharpening it, sharpening it to keep a good point. I actually have several whites because that's one I like to uh, have on hand and I might take with me to go travel sketching. So I'll have one that's nice and sharp in my kit and one that's a couple that are actually, a couple, let's be honest, I have a couple in there. Um, because it's so useful. It's like gouache in a stick. I don't have to worry about it drying out too much. It's always ready to go. Um, you don't need that much, obviously. And here I'm just kind of playing with texture by using this funky wave brush. It's uh, by Royal Nine Nickel. I just kind of tapped with it, a damp one, just to kind of smooge it out a little bit and give me some texture. Now here I realized, I stood back from it. I put it up on an easel and I said, oh, this mushroom is so lopsided. I have way too much mushroom on one side of the stem than the other. So here I am adding in that uh, a little bit more mushroom on that uh, left-hand side there because it's totally wonky and lopsided. And that's the downside to 
working sitting at a table, I have to say, because um, sometimes I don't catch errors of perspective until I'm almost done. And this would have been much easier and quicker to correct had I done it right the first time. Um, so it does help to set this up. If you don't have an easel, set it up on a bookcase or set it up on a, um, a tack on the wall or something so you can step away from it. Then you'll see those errors. And also at this point, I was kind of wondering if... Um, if I wanted to maybe have the background a little bit more textured, and I'm really not sure if having a more textured background was more effective or not, but I did end up going in there because whenever I wonder something, I like to try it because I figure if I'm wondering it and I'm doing a tutorial, then somebody else is probably wondering it too. And if I mess it up, I'm just one person messing up my painting. If uh, I'm teaching it to you know hundreds of people, if they try it and they mess it up, that's hundreds of mess ups. So at least I can show it. I can either be an inspiration or a cautionary tale and you can either do it or not. Um, I'm going in with the brush to just add some little details to the moss and um, and yeah, and actually when you see my hand go in front of the camera like that, what I'm doing is actually zooming in on my reference photo that I have on my computer in front of me. And the reference photo is from Unsplash. I just searched mushrooms, tons of options came up and I just chose actually pretty boring, a boring looking clump of them because I knew I wanted to go in and put my own personality and my own colors in there and, uh, and kind of make it kind of funky. Um, you can go in with the dry crayons after everything, after you've liquefied stuff, you don't have to liquefy it down. Uh, always test out your colors too before you commit it to your painting. That's Masking tape is great for that. The reason I added the masking tape to my board, because this is a piece of matte board that I put clear gesso on, I really don't need to tape it down for stability. I put the masking tape down so I'd have something to grab onto while I was um, t moving the painting around. And then I'd also have something to tape a piece of glassine to so it could... Uh, um, just to protect it until I decide to frame it or whatever I'm going to do. So I did decide to go in with some more pan pastel and add some texture to the background. Every time I use pan pastel, I'm like, why don't I use these more? I, I love these. Same thing with watercolor crayons. Every time I use them, I'm like, oh, why don't I use these more? So I'm kind of adding the texture in there. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but um, that's kind of one of those time will tell things. I'm using a variety of sponges and soft tools just to see what sort of marks I like. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm thinking of this, to be honest. I'm kind of thinking, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Did I like it better before? It's like when you go to the eye doctor and they're like, better one, better two, better one, better two, better one, better two. By the end of the thing, you don't even know what looks good anymore. It's like, I don't even know. Can you just take the, the thing where you look inside my eyeballs and figure out what I need because I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel like at the end of a painting. Plus, you know, my eyes are pretty tired by the end of a painting and um, and then I'm tired. Oh yeah, I was I grabbed my uh, Derwent Light Fast uh, white pencil there because I was thinking maybe I can go in and add a little detail with that but then I just I wasn't laying down enough pigment so I went back to the um the crayons I actually put my Derwent Light Fast in a caddy on top of my desk so I'm like I, they're my favorite why do I I treat them so precious I need to use them if I use one up big deal I'll buy another one you know I'll buy another single pencil uh it's ridiculous I gotta stop the insanity so I bought this cute little <laughs> this cute little caddy at uh, TJ Maxx no it was Marshall's I had to go in to get a pair of shoes for the New York trip because I just needed something that was going to be comfortable to like sneakers. It didn't look like sneakers basically. Um, because my sneakers are all really rough because I walk in the woods a lot and uh, they're all a hot mess. So I had to buy some shoes. Um, and then I made the mistake of strolling through the um, the decoration in the stationary aisle and I saw the cutest caddy. And I'm like, oh, I got to get that. Then I'm like, oh, what am I going to put in this? Oh, I know. I'm going to put my uh, Derwent Life Fast in there and my Derwent Pro Colors in my like super um, precious Derwent Signature pencils that are discontinued. They were around like a decade ago or something. They're very light fast pencils. I think they were the precursor to Light Fast, but... Um, um, anyway, those are all in there in my Durant drawings. I'm like, I'm putting those pencils front and center. They're my favorites. I should use them instead of like using the budget ones that because I'm not afraid of using them up for whatever reason. I should be more afraid of using those up because I can't just replace a single pencil. So anyway, so I'm peeling off the tape. I love this part. It gives you the reveal. And there you can see the finished picture. And I'm happy with it. It was fun. Um, I hope you give something like this a try. Maybe try some of these techniques and see how they work for you. And again, if you would like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it in Critique Club. I'll have a link in the video description so you can check it out. I want to thank you so much for watching this Sketchbook Sunday time lapse. And until next time, happy crafting!